yoga is such a vast subject. If one reads Yoga Sutras, Patanjali covers a lot of aspects in life. When Mahatma Gandhi decided to get independence by following the first two principles of yoga, known as non-violence and truth. So he experimented with non-violence and truth, which everybody knew. And we won the independence on the basis of yogic philosophy. There is a story in, Upa, in, Upa, in Upanishad called Raikwa. And Raikwa was staying under the bullock cart 24 hours, non moving anywhere. So the king at that time recognized that this man must be a very great soul. So let me go and approach him. So he goes and approaches him. He says, what can you give me for my knowledge? He said, half the country, half my kingdom. So Raikwa laughs. He said, that's not belonging to you. What is yours you just offer, then I can think of you. So he could not answer very fast. Then he came to meet him every now and then. He said, I offer myself to you. Then Raikwa said, you are the fit person to learn the spiritual life. So that it depends upon staya. A staya we call it. Free non covetousness If you take Bhishma, Brahmacharya Sama, he made up his mind that he would not marry at all on account of historical background. And he proved himself as a number one celibate who by willpower controlled, whereas Hanuman was a natural celibate. So if we go through like that, each individual taking one aspect of yoga conquered the world, conquered their minds, conquered their bodies, conquered their self. Then I thought, if when we have got examples of these people, why not asanas? At that time I was 16, 17 years old. But that was the example, because living example at that time was Mahatma Gandhi. Only three people in India were the living examples at that time. Arabindu, uh, Ramana Maharshi, Mahatma Gandhi. So all these three living legends of that time showed me a way. That means whatever aspect I take of yoga, I have to be totally in action, totally in love, totally to interpenetrate, reflect of what I am doing. So jnana, bhakti and karma. I brought all the three aspects of the ancient philosophy while practicing asanas. Many people say yoga asana is not yoga at all. It's all new philosophers who talk on easy chair sitting and giving talks. In olden days, it was not so. Everybody were made to do asanas, which all the historical background will give you the, that it was compulsory for everyone. So even at the age of five and seven, when they take the sankalpa, they say, asana pranayama. That means take a correct position and do pranayama in order to do the japa of the gayatri. That means asana and pranayama were there from time immemorial without any deviation or division, whether they follow a karmic path or a ganic path or a yogic path or a bhakti path. So asana and pranayama was compulsory. Asana and pranayama and everything is there. Even today when they do the puja, the priest says asana pranayama. So it has become now a literary word, but not actual. But in those days, they were actual. They had to do it. And afterwards only they were made to do the japas and prayer and yajna. So if you consider that historically, it shows definitely that asana and pranayama were 
a major part in those days. So now today, close your eyes, sit for meditation. Nobody knows. So whether they are doing meditation or they are going to sleep, or in a somatic state, semi-somatic uh, state. So whereas the asanas, you have to bring your attention totally with awareness to each and every cell of your part, so which needs a tremendous uh, discipline. So I thought, in order to make their mind to get involved, I have to make the Gyanandiyas, the five senses of perception, to, be, to act so clearly, so that the mind is automatically, like a magnet, drawn towards the senses of perception. So I started working on the senses of perception, using the organs of action as a prop for the evolution in the subject. So that evolution came from alignment. If my right toe is active, why left toe is not active? If my second toe is straight, if the, lie, the second toe of the other leg is crooked, why this crooked, why this is straight? So I learnt alignment by looking at my own body, that this toe takes the load here, this toe takes the load here, it is wrong. And but the, Lord Krishna is the only person who has given the, uh, the perceptual aspect of yoga, samatvam yoga uchyate. Karma Sakoshalam, Yoga Karma Sakoshalam. These two sentences, Samatvam Yoga Uchyate, Sankaya Shirogrivan Dharayan Achalam Sira. So the body, the plumb line is the center, the extremities, the right and the left, should be of equal stretch, equal feeling to the plumb line. So that is Sira Sakamasana. Not today saying people sit comfortably. That means you have to need so much of attention that whether the right extreme part of the right, extreme part of the left, are they in plumb line to the center. So how to bring the extremities of the body in plumb line? Through Lord Krishna's message, I started learning and that's how I attended to alignment. Narasimha, how is he sitting? Yoga Narasimha, he is tied with a cloth, is it not? Now even you have seen, there are a lot of yogis who use danda for their aram. So it's a prop. That means it was existing in the early time. But somehow it was lost. Then they said the yogis were doing shishas on the tree. But where do you get the explanation? So somebody have to try. So I saw in the banyan tree one, their, ro their roof was like that. It was hanging, so I just clapped on it and I did shishas and I said, this is very good, how to tie a rope. Patanjali has given the effect of yoga in one sutra, Tato Dvandvo Anabhigataha. So people do not understand the meaning of that. What is that Dvandvo? What is that Dvandvo? So they heat and cold, pressure and pain. So it's an effect. But the core is not that. Core is the mind. So mind has, has to do, does do things. It wants to satisfy the senses and it wants to satisfy the self. So it is caught in between. To go with the senses or to go with the core. So when once the asana reaches that level where the mind becomes single, the dual mind becomes single mind, that means it automatically goes towards the core, the soul. And that how it led me to experience the self in the practice of asana. It's not today they call all for health sake. Health is a byproduct. Now, where no Patanjali has said nowhere that this yoga is for health. Yoga is only meant to bring the dual mind to a single mind. And that is in the third chapter he elaborates still very well. Tato manaj vitvam vikarna bhava pradhana jayascha. So, the, by practicing the asanas regularly, one reaches, the mind reaches a state where it goes towards the basic mind. 
basic mind is the single mind. So, third chapter he answers all the problems of the asana. Rupa, lavan, nabalavan, samanatvan, kaya sampate. What is samapati? When today people speak of meditation, sit quiet. So, they induce medically for them to go towards meditation. But I am making biologically, by practicing the asana, to bring the self from its prison house to travel in the body. So, that's the difference between my way of teaching. How I change, transform yoga is to bring the self from this prison house so that it can travel in the body to perceptual practice of yoga. So that the mind and self are one with the body there is, so that there is no division where between body, mind and self. And that's how I learnt it, I struggled, I presented it to the public which has become now a household subject in all over all in all the continents of the world. But why the subject which was given by sages, rishis to Indians was so much neglected? It was an alien subject to the very sons of the great sages of India. Maybe due to historical background like the Mughals, then British, who invaded India, made us complete to make our art and science to forget and they introduced their art and science so that the people can become turn what you call turncoats to that that line in those days it is said that india was the richest country and india became a poor country because they carried away everything all the wealth all the sampat of india were carried away you know when the mughals en entered india Taimurlang, they were molesting, raping women. So they had to go to remote places. So connection, we lost the connection. As we lost the connection, we lost the uh, Samskriti. When I went to England in 1954, at that time, the independence was only seven years old. So we, even the British never allowed me to have a tea with other people. I was segregated because I was an Indian, I was a slave. I was eating only bread and coffee because there was no vegetables even available. Fried vegetables were available and it was straining my liver. So I used to only take bread, bread and butter and coffee, that's all. And they used to say, this grass eater has so much of strength. I used to conduct cloth morning till night without any fatigue. And they all said, we eat so much of healthy food. This man eats only grass. Lettuce, that's all. So I accepted all those things. Do, do, do people know that? They were calling me a slave. So I, I had in my mind, I will be a slave driver to these slave drivers. In my mind. But outside I did not explain. I will one day treat you like that. But I made them. Now, in the early books, if you read, what BK stands for? Beating, kicking and sh uh, shouting. Now, today the same people say, it is for beauty, knowledge and serenity. BK stands for this. Now you can imagine what transformation has taken place from beauty to beauty. God bless you.